Hey guys, so for today's video we're looking at the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. For 2022, Jeep is no longer offering the SRT model for its WK models, and the new 5th generation WL Grand Cherokees currently do not have a designated performance model either. So it looks like the 2021 models will be the last SRTs for the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Of course, Jeep could always bring back another SRT or a similar high-performance version, but given the disbandment of the SRT team and Jeep moving towards electrification, it just doesn't seem likely. Either way, this gave me the excuse to do another history, major flaws, and why it got cancelled episode. For these types of videos, the first part focuses on looking back at the history of the car, and then we jump to talking about the events that led to the car being cancelled, and any flaws that it had. I've already done a lot of Mopar vehicles for this series, so check the playlist out in the top right corner if you want to see more. Anyways, let's get started. The SRT Grand Cherokee had two major generations, the first from 2006 to 2010, and the second from 2012 to 2021, so we'll go over both of those. Also, the SRT8 was available in many markets worldwide, including North America, the Middle East, Europe, and Australia, so you might see some pictures of vehicles from across the world. The WK Grand Cherokee was out from 2005 to 2010, and the SRT8 version would debut at the 2005 New York International Auto Show, first available for 2006 models. It would then be offered for the rest of the generation until 2010. Pricing began at just under $40,000 US in the first year, and rose up to around $43,000 by 2010. Upon first glance, the SRT8 didn't look a whole lot different from the other Grand Cherokee models, however there are certainly some details that give it away. Only several colors were available, like Bright Silver, Brilliant Black, and Inferno Red. The SRT8 had a monochrome look with some bright chrome accents at the belt level and body side. The rear is distinguished with a center mounted dual exhaust with 4 inch polished tips. If you look closely you can spot SRT emblems on both the front doors, as well as the tailgate. The wheels were bigger than the other models, with polished Alcoa forged 5 spoke aluminum alloy wheels that were 20 by 9 inch up front and 20 by 10 inch in the rear for the United States, and 20 by 8 inch all around for the European versions. The tires were staggered accordingly, with 255-45R20s in the front and 285-40R20s in the rear. It's also worth noting here that there was a mid-cycle refresh for 2008 and up models, with a revised front fascia with a new grille, headlights, and taillights. The SRT front fascia specifically was redesigned to improve the airflow into the radiator and through the integrated brake ducts. Moving inside this first gen SRT8, you can find power adjustable performance bucket seats with suede inserts and large bolsters. Otherwise there's carbon fiber trim on the leather wrapped steering wheel, instrument panel and shift knob, while aluminum trim is found on the center stack, shifter and door switch bezels. The SRT8 continues the high tech racer look with unique blue accented gauges, with a 180 mile per hour speedometer and oil pressure and oil temperature readouts in the center stack. Just like the exterior, 2008 and up models received some changes inside, with softer, more luxurious materials used, a new dark slate gray interior color, accent stitching, an updated instrument panel and dashboard, and satellite navigation and backup camera as standard equipment. The SRT lineup during this time was powered by the 6.1 liter Hemi V8, which also included the Charger, Challenger, Magnum, and 300 alongside this Grand Cherokee. This engine was developed by the SRT team from the 5.7 liter Hemi by adding more displacement, increasing the compression ratio, and redesigning the cylinder heads, intake, and exhaust systems for better flow and increased engine speed. The power output was 420 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Performance tests show that this SUV could do 0-60 to 60 in roughly 4.4-4.6 to 4 .6 seconds and hit the quarter mile in 13.2 seconds at 104.1 miles per hour. Those numbers meant that the Grand Cherokee was the fastest accelerating vehicle within the SRT8 lineup at the time, quicker than the Charger and the 300, and behind only the Dodge Viper SRT10. The SRT8 does not have an electronic speed governor, so the top speed is 170 miles per hour. The engine was paired with the Mercedes-Benz NAG1 WA580 5-speed automatic transmission. To go with the extra power, Jeep added better stopping power as well, with 4-piston gloss black Brembo calipers in all four corners, with 14.2-inch front rotors and 13.8 inches in the rear. Cornering is also improved over standard models, with Bilstein performance shocks, lower and stiffer springs, thicker sway bars, heavy-duty bushings, and redesigned front suspension knuckles. The result is a lower ride with just 7 inches of ground clearance, and this makes it 1 inch lower than a regular Grand Cherokee. 
The exhaust is also upgraded from the 5.7 liter Hemi up from 2.5 inches to 2.75 inches of diameter. All SRT8 Jeeps came with full time 4x4 standard. There is also a unique NV146 transfer case which uses an electronic applied clutch pack that transfers between 0 to 50% of the torque to the front axle but has no low range or manual controls. The front and rear differentials are both open with no limited slip capability. There is also an upgraded Dana 44 rear differential. As for a few other numbers, the payload is rated for 1,050 pounds with a towing capacity rating of 3,500 pounds. More weight can be towed, but it is harder on the transmission. The Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8 was a complete performance package with exterior enhancements, race-inspired interior, exceptional ride and handling, and thrilling acceleration. But of course, Jeep would make it better. The fourth generation Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2 was unveiled at the 2009 New York Auto Show, and that was out for the 2011 model year to replace the previous version. There was a one-year hiatus for several SRT8 models, like the Grand Cherokee, Chrysler 300, and Dodge Charger, so the Grand Cherokee SRT8 returned as a 2012 model, and that was sold right up until 2021 before being discontinued. For this WK2, every inch of sheet metal was new, with more fluid and aerodynamic lines. It changed things up from that blocky WK design, some argue for the better, but others disagree. The other thing that changed was the price, as the SRT became far more expensive. In 2012, they started at just under $55,000, and that rose all the way up to over $71,000 by the last year for 2021. As for some of the other changes, the wheelbase is up 5.3 inches to 114.8 inches, and it's at least 3 inches longer and wider overall. The front end has been smoothed out with sweeping headlights and an air dam for better aerodynamics, and the 7 slot grille is back again. The rear end is changed as well with bigger taillights and a body colored spoiler, but that doesn't stick out as much and makes the Jeep blend in with other SUVs from this era. The SRT8 gets a body colored grille and wheel flares with bumper inlets that feed air to the engine and brakes. The bulging hood has two functional air vents, and Jeep added a deep chin splitter below the bumper. Some customers complained about the center mounted exhaust location, so Jeep switched things up with the 4 inch exhaust tips on each side this time around. More paint choices were available, like bright white, brilliant black, deep cherry, granite crystal, maximum steel, and redline. Again, there were mid-cycle improvements for 2014 and up models, with a few visual and interior changes, with features that were added, like slightly more aggressive grille, much improved and modernized rear end, one touch lift gate, the 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen, and the 8 speed automatic transmission, which we'll cover later in the performance section. There was a name change too, after 2014, the SRT8 moniker was dropped, and it was simply known as the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT from here on out. New Goliath wheels were added for the WK2 SRT8, this time 20 by 10 inch forged alloys all around, with P29545020 Pirelli Scorpion Verde all season run flat tires. Another wheel was the Spider Monkey design, and then more options were added later in the cycle. The brakes were upgraded compared to the first gen SRT, with 6 piston front calipers up front with 15 inch rotors, and 4 piston rear calipers with 13.8 inch rotors. 2015 and up models had a high performance brake package that gave customers 2 piece slaughter rotors instead. Moving inside, this SRT had black Napa leather and suede seats, dark plastics, satin chrome, and carbon fiber accents. For some reason, Chrysler's 8.4 inch Uconnect infotainment system wasn't immediately available for the Grand Cherokee, but it would get added in 2014. The seats are similar to any SRT vehicle with that leather and suede combo, with heating and cooling. The rear seats are heated only and they have far less bolstering. Laguna leather also became an option in 2014, available in several colors since then like black, sepia, and red. You can also find embroidered SRT logos and contrast stitching on the front seats. SRT performance pages were a big hit, which show instant data like horsepower and torque, 0 to 60 mile per hour time, g-forces, braking, and more. The main attraction of the Grand Cherokee SRT is of course the power plant, and Chrysler improved on the 6.1 Hemi with their new 6.4 liter or 392 cubic inch V8 engine. Early models from 2012 to 2014 had 470 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque, and 13% better fuel economy than the previous SRT8. For 2015, the power was bumped slightly to 475 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque from a PCM reflash. 
Despite the overall jump of 55 horsepower and 50 pound-feet of torque over the 6.1, the newer SRT Jeep is around 300 pounds heavier than the older version, so the performance times are nearly identical. 0 to 60 in 4.4 to 4.6 seconds, and the quarter mile in 13 to 13.2 seconds. The first two years of this generation got the 5-speed automatic transmission from before, but starting in 2014, the SRT got the 8HP70 Torque Flight 8-speed automatic instead. That's a much better transmission that has over 90 gear shift programs. Paddle shifters are on these vehicles to have full control over shifting if desired. The suspension consists of a Bilstein adaptive damping system, independent front and multi-link rear, and front and rear stabilizer bars. It uses Jeep's Quadra Track 4-wheel drive system with active on-demand 4x4 and also the Select Track system which offers 5 modes for the driver to choose from, Auto, Track, Sport, Snow, and Tow. Select Track controls mostly everything from the stability control and adaptive damping systems to the transmission shift points, division of torque front to rear, throttle sensitivity, and cylinder deactivation. As for a few other numbers, Earlier model SRTs, so we'll use the 2012s as an example, had a payload of 1,350 pounds and a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. Later models, like the 2017, had the same payload, but towing had been increased to 7,200 pounds. The SRT was the highest performance, fastest, and most powerful Grand Cherokee available right up until the Trackhawk arrived in 2018 with the Hellcat engine. In early 2021, Jeep revealed their new 5th generation WL Grand Cherokee in the form of the 3-row long wheelbase version, the Grand Cherokee L. The 2-row version would follow in September 2021. Jeep still marketed the WK2 Grand Cherokee alongside those new models, but they offered a condensed lineup with just the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine. So after 2021, the Grand Cherokee SRT was gone after 15 years of models. Overall sales were pretty solid, of course the Grand Cherokee is typically a volume seller, but the SRT model itself sold over 75,000 times over those 15 years, which is decent enough for a niche performance SUV. So that brings us to the next part of the video, looking at the reasoning for the cancellation and the flaws of the Grand Cherokee SRT. Some vehicles have blatant failures, flaws, or shortcomings, but this SUV isn't one of them. It's not an inherently horrible vehicle to own, and most owners love their SRTs. But still, as I do in this series of videos, I have tried to come up with 7 different reasons and or flaws that refer to the car or Chrysler decision making and decision executions. So let's look at those reasons now. The first major reason is simply that the new Grand Cherokee came out in 2021 and Jeep wants to push consumers to buy that new and far more expensive shiny toy and get rid of the older stuff like the SRT and the Trackhawk. Companies do this all the time, releasing their newer base version of the car and then putting out the performance version later. One example is the Corvette. While the C8 came out for 2020, the Z06 version isn't available until the 2023 models. So we could see the Grand Cherokee SRT return as a WL model, but that might be a few years away still. Another big factor is the shift towards electrification. The Jeep brand has a mission called Zero Emission Freedom. Their CEO Christian Munier talked about this during the 2021 EV Day, saying that there will be zero emission 4x e vehicles in every SUV segment, with 70% of all Jeep vehicles sold being electrified by 2025. Already by 2021, 100% of the SUV lineup in Europe offered 4x e technology, and the Compass and Renegade 4x e were the best-selling low-emission vehicles in Italy, which is Jeep's largest market in Europe. The Wrangler 4x e was also the best-selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicle in North America. Jeep isn't a performance brand, so the SRT with the big 6.4 liter Hemi doesn't fully make sense for this zero emission freedom strategy going forward. Another potential factor here is the fact that the SRT performance engineering team was disbanded early last year in 2021, not even one month after the official completion of the Stellantis merger. What that really means is that, quote, in February 2021, all of the core elements of the SRT performance engineering team were integrated into Stellantis' global engineering organization. End quote. So this means the SRT engineers will now be mixed with performance engineers from the PSA side of Stellantis, and both the teams will be able to work on high-performance projects across all the brands in the Stellantis portfolio. So this is essentially a restructuring move, but the SRT engineers still have to report to different people and spread their expertise across the company, rather than just focusing on Dodge and Jeep like before. 
So this is essentially a restructuring move, but the SRT engineers still have to report to different people and spread their expertise across the company, rather than just focus on Dodge and Jeep like before. Whether there will still be SRT-specific products, we don't even know yet. This next reason is something I've thought about, and I'll try my best to explain it, but you might disagree. The Grand Cherokee SRT8 was a wicked beast when it released, one of the fastest and most powerful SUVs on the road. However, by 2021, the SRT wasn't even the best performing Grand Cherokee model. This fastest SUV class has become one for the rich, with vehicles like the BMW X5M, BMW X6M, Audi RS Q8, Porsche Cayenne Turbo, Jaguar F-Pace SVR, Maserati Levante, Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, Mercedes AMG GLE 63S, Land Rover Range Rover Sport SVR, and more. The Grand Cherokee Trackhawk and Dodge Durango Hellcats were competitors, at least performance-wise in this class, but I have the opinion that the people who want SUVs like this often overlook the cheaper Jeep vehicles, and they are content to spend 1.5 to 2 times the price of the Jeeps to get these extremely luxurious and fancy vehicles that really turn heads and show off a brand name. The Grand Cherokee is way more successful in terms of sales than those other vehicles, but that's because they sell so many lower trim models that are in the $30,000 to $60,000 range to their target market of middle class families, and just a few thousand of the SRTs as we went over. With the Trackhawk gone, it made sense to get rid of the SRT as well. As cool as it was, why keep offering this vehicle that's essentially in a market of its own? It's mostly too expensive for Jeep's target market, but not luxurious enough for the buyers seeking performance SUVs. Now I want to discuss some problems and flaws of the vehicle. This is just more of a talking point, and these factors are not at all responsible for the cancellation of the SRT. One thing that many don't like is the multi-displacement system, or MDS, that's found on automatic transmission equipped 6.4 liter Hemi V8 engines. This deactivates four cylinders during light loads or when cruising, but it can be annoying to drivers who want the power in certain situations like on the highway, and it doesn't really save that much on fuel. It really is questionable to include a feature like that on what's supposed to be a high-performing vehicle. One pretty common flaw is that the leather material will start to wrinkle, lift, and or separate from the dashboard on these cars, sometimes at very low mileage for no apparent reason. The same problem happens with the carbon fiber trim that's on the glove box and the doors on the later models, which starts to separate, and that same issue is also found on the Trackhawks as well. This is usually caused by excessive humidity and moisture, but still people in cold climates have suffered from the problems as well. Another pretty major flaw has to do with the engine specifically. I talked all about this in my 6.4 liter Hemi Fatal Flaws video, but to briefly summarize the issue, the roller bearings in the lifter roller fail, these are also called needle bearings, and that causes the roller to seize up and end up sliding or tapping on the cam lobe rather than rolling as it should. Another way of saying it is that the lifters are faulty and can stick or get stuck, and that stuck lifter then wears down the camshaft lobes and eats into the cam. The lobes get worn down far enough to the point that the valves don't open enough anymore, and symptoms include ticking that sounds like a sewing machine, shaking, stalling, vibration that comes and goes, shuddering, misfires, or a misfire check engine light for the problem cylinder. This requires lifters and camshaft replacement, about a four dollars to $5,000 job at a dealership. This is a problem that usually occurs after 100,000 miles, so it happens gradually over the life of the vehicle, and not something that will affect it early on. Otherwise, owners have really complained about several things, as it is a Chrysler product and they still have trouble sometimes with quality control. Some of those include water pump and coolant pump leaking prematurely, wheels and Brembo clear coat peeling, and problems with the adaptive damping suspension with leaking shocks or rubbing wires. So that's the end of this video guys. How do you feel about the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT? Make sure to let me know down in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.